Okay, let's here go, we go. Let's see what happens with me and Chris. Here we go. Yep. He tucked you in. Oh, ooh, ooh. Oh, they're, oh, they're ooh. all there. Oof. You wake up on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you've had. Were they memories or premonitions? Yeah, what band you lie in bed and stare. Huh? The bed, the band above the. It's not what we learned. It's not BTS because there's okay. either not enough or too many members. Okay. You uh, lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders' cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used. Blank. Blank. I'm going to say salt or pepper. Anyway. And then there was the secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Oh, I should have clicked through this because this was the... Before you could tell her about the encounter with Spork Monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound strange, but I think I might be... Um... I think I might like Clank. Oh, sorry. She likes the robot. Like him? Like, like, like? I know. It sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I uh, some, I like him. I like, like him. She's like the Chocobot. And Mr. We got to. <laughs> That's right. She is. We got to talking after class, and he's actually totally a sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonial Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was also so popular, he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go enough. to. And also, the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. That makes no sense. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, oh, Either, that's you. That's me. Either way, maybe best if you took it slow with your this new boy, like I am with the colonel. Nice and slow. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student ever to attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. You're you're a thing now? The fine thing. We definitely connected yesterday. Wait, Ben Monster TV is raiding with a party of 20! Thank you, Ooh. Ben Monster TV! Welcome! You were just in here, and now... Huh? Explain what we're doing. Explain what we're doing. Uh, they'll we're figure it out. They'll figure it out. Ben Monster TV, okay. did you like go live? You were in here, and then did you go live, and then you came back in here? Either way, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Hi, everybody. My name is Toilet T Paper. This is my I'm good friend out. John. And we say welcome. 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 Toilet gets mad at me when I interrupt him, so I'm going to shut up now. Apparently. I was introducing you. I was going to okay. give you proper credit. Oh <sighs> my god. If you would like to go meet John live in person tonight, you can at the Dream Girls Theater at the Winter <laughs> Park Victory House. Oh no. Uh, just, just go to the Abbey and you will see. <laughs> <laughs> what? Forget it. Go on. Okay. That, me and Colonel, we definitely connected yesterday. Wink, wink. Uh, but thank you, Ben. Uh, ben, thank you for being here. And Gabe and Inkian, thank you for following. We really do appreciate it. Thank you for the hype train. <laughs> it's going great. Thank you, Puppet Ups. Puppet Tricks for asking. It's going great. Okay, go on. Uh -huh. Sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't you? I guess. Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea of how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a secret ingredient, too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Ah! Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Da-da-da. da 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 so this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in a botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't, this be, can't good. be good. She probably, he probably offered her money to get the secret watch. Yeah, yeah, it's like a slug with Slugworth and uh, a Wonka. Uh, really he told me all about his passion for spices, secret spices. Char Charlie Bucket. 
The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was like a powder created from a super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and I brought them home. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the t meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both shared interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. He's that guy. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt I'd be much used to anyone. Please, please, please! It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. Ah! You have to see you know what the secret ingredient is? Love. Um, tell her the ingredient or make nope. up a fake ingredient. Make up a fake ingredient. I'm not going to tell everyone. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about... It was Eye of Newt. I know. Sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt? Wow! She's annoying. Oh, boy. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing and you figure out that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm what she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh, geez. It's Colonel Sanders. <laughs> He's arriving at school. On a horse, apparently. That's paintbrush. That's paintbrush? Well. Stand back and admire his majestic glory no. or run to run him. Run to him. You decide the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him and get kicked by his horse. <laughs> In the face. Surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. I see. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. However, your sudden movement surprised the horse. It rears up, kicking you directly in the face. You called that one. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. Oh, no. This is taking a horrible turn. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh, John, I'm here to deliver you a message. You should, you should sound like, what's his name, Mr. Gherkin? I don't remember what Mr. Gherkin's. He's Mr. Uh, I don't remember what he sounds like. Anyway, not this, not guy. this guy. It's important that you remember this exactly as I said. If you forget, the world could end so you'd know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you sure. can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. Gee, I wonder if it's Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. And that name is... But before you can continue, you suddenly awake. <gasps> ah, jeez. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. Chicken tendering to you. <laughs> he roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned must? Ugh. Oof. God. Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes or lean in for a kiss. I'm going to lean in for a kiss. All right, you're really going for it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You've known him for a day! Are you really sure? I guess you must be. You put your arms around Colonel Sanders' neck and pull him in for a kiss. But he turns his face and you awkwardly kiss his ear. You can feel him shudder. Ooh, that's not good. Too soon. You clearly mistook his compassion for love. Your soul crawls inside of itself and you instantly die of embarrassment. Don't tell me this is the end of the... If this is the end, I'm going to... Game over! Oh, give up. Try again. If we have to start at the goddamn back beginning... No, no I don't want to start again. It's just stupid. <laughs> we're going to see where we're going to start back from. Oh, we have to go through all this again? Okay. All skip, right. Skip, skip. All right. All right. She Miriam, yeah. Okay, skip, skip, skip. So instead of, of kissing his horse or whatever... Oh, you should have kissed his horse. That might have been good. Issue secret ingredients. 
he shows up. Fake ingredient, I already did that. Blah, 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 I have Newt. Here comes the Colonel. Stand back and admire his majestic glory. Because apparently that's what you gotta do with these jayholes. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without ever Young acknowledging like that he's being watched, he does a yeah, short horse good. dance before dismount with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its ass, sending it running free into the countryside. You know, it looks like Daphne's water slide. Yeah, it does a little bit. You were so <laughs> struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry, he knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. No, 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 no. no, that's too much. No, no, what no, no. Horse, what a horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. Dang it, that's what I just said. Beautiful horse. Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Hi, right, John. It just gets really nervous around people they like. What? This is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and rap all night. It was gruesome. You should have seen it. In another life, they got kicked and killed by a horse. It was horrible. Your horse. She gives you a wink and a smile as if to say, situation handled. Can't blame a gal for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. Okay. You enter the classroom when you see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way, they're hiding. You know it must be really bad. I can't even see them. They're not even... Like counterfeiting recipes, bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients, bad. Summoning a demon, bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa, whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're exactly ready to handle this. Why don't you make lo uh, What is her, her? She was like Amanda. Da, why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature. Act like you're not interested in them, but really try to get a closer look. Ooh, I'm going to do number B. Let's see what's going on. You sit near the rivals, but lead your back turned to them. You can even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. Oh, this can't go. Focus, this'll... focus, 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 focus. However, he notices you eavesdropping, and you try to cover your tracks and improv an, uh, improvise an excuse. <laughs> It's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us. We want to learn. Yep, that's John. That's John. That's John right there. Now you've upset them. Oh, who cares? Oh, God, what happened to his hair? Uh, oh, and you're like the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules, Dad. I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Yeah, you could eat Being the best that. chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills, Dodd. It takes creativity. It takes panache. Ugh. And it does hurt to use a little it evil. Does. Why do they... And it, and it doesn't it does hurt, hurt to use a little evil. Why is it always got to be right across his crotch? It's The, the wording <laughs> is always just right across the bulge in his right pants. <laughs> you finally get a look at what they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found at last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his Ugh. back. I don't know what you're talking about. This book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been just studying the book. They've got pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing! <laughs> Before you can dig any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. Clank must be running late. He's always in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's uh, meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything but run over your foot. And the dialogue is right across his crotch. Right, right across. Look at the under Bzz, 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 womp. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp, womp. Oh, she's... No, your mother was a stand mixer. 
He's getting mad. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders! The crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. But look yeah. at my, look at my eye line. What do they call that? I have like the cat's eye. I don't know makeup. Okay, anyway, smoky, smoky eye. Yes, the smoky eye. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, we'll get a hold of yourselves. <laughs> Save it for the arena, at least. Or oh, don't, honestly. I, what do I care? You've got lofty, lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students! Students! Please take your seats! I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town and my tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now and I hope you're ready to, to learn. You try to give Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. <sighs> sorry, Sprinkles sorry. Rich. I get a little worked up if people try to pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let that be a lesson to you. Speaking of snarls, we gave Nala a bath this morning. She liked that. She did she like it? No, she did. She oh, she did not. Like no. no. Yeah, Harvey she doesn't just, like it either. Harvey just sits there all wet and just looks like, well, miserable. this is it. This is My it. Life. This is the end of This is the end of me. Well, that we had three towels to towel her off, and then Sean used the hair dryer, blow dryer. Anyway. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles <laughs> regains control of the classroom. Without further ado. We'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. Who would have thunk? You want to pay attention to the lesson. You truly do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed that name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. And you miss most of the important parts. Colonel Sanders is the dream man for me. I love everything, even his little goatee. The way he looks, the way he smells, he really rings my bells. Take it, John! Colonel Sanders. Chicken, you're number one. You're number one. There you go. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, John? Naturally, this appears to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? A glass of water? A shimmering pepper? A dog biscuit? Ooh, a glass of water. Boring. So well, I don't want to get in trouble. You grab the glass of water and gulp it down. It's cool and crisp. The pure snow melted by a mountain spring. Hey, that was mine. It was from my favorite toilet. You owe me six dollars. Oh, jeez. And you've got excellent taste. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure I'll forgive you someday. Ah, why is there a picture of Tony Shaloub on uh, uh, the wall? Anyway. But look at the time. We should probably wrap this up. we got three minutes left. Yeah. Come on, it's time for lunch! Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim, and your rivals Jeez. make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The final countdown. The level of theatrics for these two is off the charts. Do you demand that they stop wasting everybody's time, or do you step up and tell them you're on. You're on. Let's see what you got there, jackass. All right. Jeez. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? What's he Ending doing? at his crotch. Why is he? Right it's like... 
Count? Oh, that's you. Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool. You're the fool, no, fool, Dion. Oh. No, I'm not the fool. You're the fool. Fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, John. Well, <laughs> I'll be watching for. Pre I'll be watching your performance. Oh, jeez. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. <laughs> what? Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Just then, a huge light blasts in your face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about, motherfuckers. a I stand corrected. Actually, I sit corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. I don't quite know what it means, but I said it, and I said it with a folksy charm that makes it mean like it means something. And that's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope its message lifts us, lifts you to victory. L like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now's my chance to shine. Notice this sentence ends right in my ass. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken. You made his, you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Uh, what temperature does water boil at? 100 C, 100 Celsius. That's right. But how could you have even gotten into high school without knowing that? Oh, God. You got to be quick, John. I was telling you, but you were like, ugh. When it gets to rub my furry belly, let that enticing offer motivate you. You're gonna need you're gonna need this you're gonna need to season the chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders recipe exactly, but you have an idea. Eleven herbs and spices. That's right. You might not know all of the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Oh god, we gotta get through this. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Vigilance, trust, gratitude. Trust. trust. That's right. Ah. You must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his vice and draw energy from that place. Small town dreams and big dreams of war. That's right! This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it! Oh, God. pressure. You try to shut off the noise in the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. Silence. That's right! Uh, when they taste your cookie, they'll be so taken with it that they'll be unable to speak. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, John. <laughs> this is so stupid. He's, He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoonsfuls of gravy would it take to fill a traditional victorious... It's done. What were you thinking? Get back to the competition. Grr. You were stranded on a desert island with only one desert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. Oh, God. You're really That's... failing this. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're failing behind. Sorry, I forgot the question. <laughs> what? What does it even do? I can't even read it. What does the biscuits... Uh, what does that have to do with crafting a spectacular fried chicken and delicate baked biscuit? Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley has already begun planting... Plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into the stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Eh, uh, yikes. Zerp. I know you love it. Uh, nothing more than seeing your fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Ah, we're. You might not have any hands, but John does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's the easy way and the hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. 
I have an apron cover in my crotch. <laughs> when you hear everyone talking about how serious your error was, you immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. John, no! But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Stop. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> the battle is over. We've got to get OSHA in here. We got to, you call 911. You see if you can salvage your fingers from the dough. And you, uh, boil water. <laughs> it can't be. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your fucking hand. You simply can't <laughs> go on. Ah, oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. By the way, notice the curve of my ass. <laughs> no, no, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of John's bleeding into the dough. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he looks, locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. Listen, unless it's a KFC parfait, I don't want any part of it because those KFC parfaits were the best. Well, John, we got to start wrapping things up here. 